Hi, Sagittarius family. <sighs> Feels so good to sit with you guys. Um, I'm really missing you. I have Sages like, you're all far away, <laughs> which I guess is like kind of the cliche, right? But, but it's truly, most of my Sages are really far away right now. And it makes me sad. I miss you guys. I miss you so much. So I'm excited to sit with your energy today and feel through May. May is kind of cool. I'm really into this energy. We've been due for this kind of warm, ooey gooey energy as a collective for a while. It's since that Venus retrograde, there's just been a lot of intensity in general. There's been a lot of deep diving, deep digging, and May has this softness to it. And I think partially that's just that Taurus energy. Um, but generally speaking, it it is very just supportive of us being humans and human bodies connecting with each other and learning how to trust our own intuitive guidance systems and our bodies for telling us things. And that's part of the message I want to talk to you guys about today because the the note that I have for you especially the first three weeks of this month because it's Taurus season and it's such powerful energy is that this is a time of spiritual surrender for you guys you're going to be getting messages kind of relentlessly as far as how to move through the world how to connect uh, where to put your energy it's gonna be pretty clear but Taurus energy is really interesting, especially for Sag Risings like myself, because it's your sixth house of, you know, your daily habits and routines, your rituals, how you show up in the world, and often how you are connecting with your health and your body system. So you're getting this spiritual surrender energy along with this kind of big messaging going through your physical bodies, right? And so it's pretty strong for you all this month with that. Um, and when you look at how many planets are in Taurus at the beginning of the month, it's kind of wild. So of course the sun will be in Taurus starting in May, before May. Then we have the new moon in Taurus on the 4th. That new moon, just connecting with your body, connecting with your habits, your rituals, how you move your body. You know, you, Sagittarius, you guys are very physical people. How are you moving through the world and with your body in a way that feels supportive to you? It's a really important time to kind of ask those questions. We have Mercury moving into Taurus on the 6th. We have Mars entering Cancer on the 16th, but that's a different story because I'm talking about Taurus right now. Uh, Venus is entering Taurus on the 15th. So we have Moon, New Moon in Taurus, Sun in Taurus, Mercury moving into Taurus, Venus moving into Taurus, Uranus is getting nice and comfy in Taurus. I'm going to be spending many years there. And by the way, you guys, I created this awesome thing called the Magical Mid-Year. It is a toolkit. It's an intuitive guide that I'm going to be linking for Vimeo below. It is available to you guys right now. I highly recommend it. The next four months are extremely powerful for behind the scenes manifestational energy and checking in with that. We have big outer planet retrogrades. We're also getting used to Chiron and Aries and Uranus and Taurus. And I discuss how all of that is affecting your sign specifically and how to utilize it. We've got great affirmations for the Sag fam, great strategies for how to make the next four months amazing. So go check that out. Seriously, I had so much fun creating it and I think you'll really enjoy all the benefits you get out of that material. You get to hang out with me a little bit more and it's a really easily accessible way to spend more time with me and get some of that infusion of energy. But let's get back to your reading right now. So you're getting a lot of feedback with all of that energy in Taurus, right? Uh, along with that, yeah, we have a full moon in Scorpio in your 12th spiritual house. You know, full moons talk pretty loudly. Ten of swords. Woo! I know, Sages, you're not going to be happy with that because I know you've been a little frustrated by some of the rebirth you've been having to do and some of the deeper questioning you've had to be doing. Uh, it hasn't always been easy for you. I know that, but I have a good feeling about this month. I think the only reason it will be painful is if you're not listening to what you're needing and that can go from the micro to the macro and a lot of times what we're needing are little adjustments it's not always about these big wild expansive <laughs> adjustments sometimes it's a very simple shift high priestess but this is very much that full moon in Scorpio right that full moon in your 12th house the sign right before yours 
is very personal and it taps into your highest consciousness when you have the full moon and you have such a spiritually placed Scorpio is so deep and profound to have that as your 12th house energy and to have a full moon there is extremely powerful. Um, the moon's a little uncomfortable in Scorpio, but that is a really strong placement. You're getting a lot of messages from beyond, you know, kind of from beyond the physical and it, it could be a really profound time for you to see something clearly for something to click into place. And of course, just a few days later, we have Gemini season. Mercury and the sun are going to be conjunct, opening up your mirror sign, your oppositional sign of Gemini. And when we get into what I call mirror season, this is a time when not only are relationships highlighted, how we're relating to others, how we're letting others see us, how we are connecting to others, our desire to connect to others. You guys have really fun, the Gem Sag axis is really fun and talkative and communicative and playful and wants to get in there and see what's going on. Knight of Pentacles, ooh, sitting and watching and assessing. Sitting and watching and assessing. It's strong right now, you guys, but we'll talk about how these three energies and their kind of quiet behind the scenes vibe is going to be really useful for you guys. I think it will transform into something really good, but Gemini season for you kind of amps you up. And I think this Gemini season will be no exception. There will be an amplification. Of course, right now your ruling planet is retrograde in your sign and that will be going on for the next few months. We cover that in the magical mid-year. Um, Knight of Swords. There we go. There's gem season if I ever saw gem season. Uh, yeah. A little bit of a shift, wouldn't you say? <laughs> yeah. Pretty big shift from Taurus into Gemini. It's always kind of a... a big shift from fixed earth to mutable air. It's like, whoa, here we go. Okay. Um, what was I saying? Oh, your ruling planet is retrograde in us. So you're doing a lot of internal expansion, but the thing with that is the more you're tapping into that, the more quickly you're getting the answers and realizations that you need. Judgment. I love judgment. Because what it does is it actually takes away judgment. It takes away judgment. It takes away shame. Who you've been in the past. Anywhere you feel you've messed up or missed the mark or done something in a way you feel like you should have done it differently. Or the way you think you should have been or who you thought you should have been in the past. Two of Cups. Look how beautiful that is, you all. Judgment to the Two of Cups. It's like your ability to connect and feel loved and feel safe and feel appreciated and feel that you really are on a path that will carry you is just on the other side of you releasing your shame and your guilt for anything that you feel hasn't gone well. That's a, we talk about it a lot, but that's a secret part of Sag that people who don't know you well, um, don't ever really realize, you know, they just think that you go, 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 and you can just be blunt all the time and nothing would ever bother you. And like you are unfazed by eight of wands. Yes. Unfazed by life. Here we, this is, this to me is fire sign happiness right here. Eight of wands. Hell yeah. But you guys worry sometimes. You worry about your big blunt mouth sometimes. Sometimes you worry like maybe I am too much for people. Maybe I am maybe I'm too much for myself. Maybe maybe I've made big mistakes. Maybe uh maybe I haven't always stepped up where I think I should have stepped up in six of pentacles. Balance, 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 balance. I'm going to pull one more card and then we're going to talk through the profundity of this month because it's really quite quite powerful. It is like everything is there for you. Five of Swords, if you'll trust yourself. Will you trust yourself? Will you trust yourself? That's what the Five of Swords is asking. Are you going to sabotage it? Are you going to get paranoid? Are you going to look over your shoulder? Are you going to, are you going to spiritually surrender and let the beauty of this time come to meet you? That's the question. So, okay, let's talk about these two right here. Ten of Swords and the High Priestess. 
these are major power players on the energetic level. <sighs> I've been recently watching Twin Peaks The Return. I don't know if any of you guys are David Lynch fans, but these energies kind of play on that level. The otherworldliness, the other side of the coin, the creative behind the scenes energetic conversations that are going on the micro micro level and in all these spaces that we can't always see, right? Uh, the Ten of Swords is an invitation to let past versions of self, let past infractions on yourself or on others go. It's total release. And for you, it has a really spiritual vibe to it because it's here with the High Priestess. High Priestess sits at the doorway of one life and the next, of seen and unseen, of physical and spiritual, and bears witness to it all and understands that it's an ebb and flow. You know, if you see her robes, they go into the ocean. It's that understanding of waves come up and go, tides come in and out. It's all fluid. It's all moving. You guys are mutable fire. That is your jam. But I think sometimes you feel like you should be seeing it on the surface first when this is telling me that the shifts are happening behind the scenes. So if you feel some extra deep emotions rising up, don't be afraid of that. Dive in there. Let them come up. Let them fill you up and open you up. Because here's the thing. You've got some really good stuff coming to you this month. Really good. But there's, there's just one tiny difference between you really getting to receive it and enjoy it and you not. And it has to do with this kind of holding yourself back judging yourself or feeling nervous or feeling that if you let yourself believe in this that you won't be standing guard sufficiently with your wit and your dry humor and your movement and your busy work that you won't be safe unless you're doing that but the reality is that's exactly where the good stuff is hiding and waiting for you it's there it's like lined up for you it's lined up for you. So yes, you have a check-in with your high priestess, with your past self. You have a check-in. You also have two ways of moving through the world this month. Now, maybe you have some personalities like this. One who does not move their feet very much and one who's very quick. But I kind of see this too as the Taurus into Gemini season because Taurus is fixed earth. So we take our time. We move through things with with like softness and slowness, we just kind of like let the softness of like being in our bodies and listening to our intuition give us all the information we need. We don't need to move quickly in order to enjoy life, right? There's a sensuality to Taurus energy. Venus rules Taurus and Venus rules like the physicality of being in a body. It's really beautiful energy. It's a great time to pull back and just like Take it all in, you know, watch yourself. You could almost be like a third party watching yourself move through life and seeing what's working for you, what's freaking you out, what's exciting you. And then we hit into Gemini season, which is so much movement for you guys. It's your opposite sign. It's communicative. It's playful. It's diving into things. It's trying things out. It's making things happen. So there's almost the shift from nothing moving to everything moving. And I think there's a lot to that. And that's where that spiritual surrender comes in. The first half of the month may feel a little bit like spiritual surrender, but what you're really meant to be doing is listening into your body, listening into your routines, getting into the sensuality of it. And then there's a snap. There's a breakaway. After we hit through that full moon in Scorpio, there's something that starts happening. Something starts moving, a connection, a conversation that's been waiting to be had, a piece of the puzzle that been, that's been holding back, that you've been waiting for, suddenly snaps into place and you can see it. You can see how it all works together and it's a cohesive whole. And as that opens up and as this chapter opens up, judgment comes to join the party. And I think this is often the case. When we are hitting into what we really want, we're really hitting into who we're becoming, we're really hitting into the good stuff. Our, our, this is the 
actual point where not only do we start learning the new skill sets, but this is the most profound point of self-forgiveness and grace that we can give ourselves. This is really the point where if you put the medicine of grace and peace on your past selves, on who you've been, on who, what others have played a role in your life, all of that, at this exact moment, it's like the therapeutic dose. It's the therapeutic dose of freedom. And I, you know, Sages are known for wanting freedom. I get you there, like, believe me, like, that's kind of my addiction. Say, so if I, there's a thing that I'm kind of addicted to, it's finding my freedom to a fault, in my case. But true, the freedom we're really seeking, the freedom you really want, is freedom from judgment, <laughs> freedom from feeling entrapped by your own mental processes, freedom from self-judgment, self-doubt. That's true freedom. And that's what judgment's coming in here to do. There's something about what this is stirring up, what this Knight of Wands is stirring, or this Knight of Swords is stirring up, that this is a really critical point where you can just give that grace to yourself, give that freedom to yourself. And as you do that, more of what you want comes in. So it's almost like a three-step process. It's like spiritual surrender, you get the infusion of what you want. Spiritual ascension, more of what you want, if that makes sense. Because, my friends, look at these. I mean, does it get better than this? I don't know. Deep love. I'm having deja vu right now. Really big deja vu. From like two years ago. Like doing a reading with you guys. That's so wild. Wow. <laughs> True love. Partnership. Companionship. And yes, this does have to do with like romantic partners. And we are going to be in Gemini season. It amplifies that energy for you guys. It just does. Um, it has that effect. <laughs> And Mercury will be there as well, so you're getting that huge hit of energy there. But this can also just be about true connection with the people that you work, do work with, do creative work with, that you build your communities with, that you, that you go and have a tea with, who understand you and see you for who you are, right? It's like a connected energy, so you don't feel isolated, right? It's, it's that feeling of deep connectedness. And it's taking you somewhere new. Now, part of what this new landscape looks like has a lot to do with balance. It has a lot to do with evenness. And there being a lot more openness on the Sag front, quite honestly. And not just like faux openness. I'm going to like call you guys out a little bit because, and I'm with you on this. I've had to learn a lot about this in myself. But it's like, you can kind of claim, I'm totally open, I just I express my opinions, and I say what I, I need, but do you really say what you need, or do you just like express opinions, and then deep down you really need certain things from people, and then you kind of suppress it. That's not true openness. You know, true openness is being willing to say when you are feeling a little intimidated by something, or when you're feeling like you need some more support, or when you're feeling, uh, feeling vulnerable, you know, or any of those things. Um, that's true openness, right? So part of what's going on with you is you're transforming into that version of self. And it's not just about the showstopper self, it's kind of this quieter, more level-headed, and that's where that Six of Pentacles is coming in. Now, the beautiful thing about that is as scary as that seems, like it may just leave you open to attack or to loss, actually what happens is you notice that the right people start showing up much more easily because your beacon light is on. And the beacon light that you have now looks very different than the beacon light you had when you were here. When you were this person back when, Ka when Saturn was in your sign and when you were second guessing yourself and when you were holding on to people that weren't treating you very well. That's all gone. The beacon light that you have now has this ease to it. And you're getting used to it. But like I said, this month is about the soft opening. It's very like a flower, you know, it's very like a, a rose. Um, it's really powerful energy for that and it takes a little bit of time to get used to it, but it's 
there to help you navigate the world. So the one thing I will say with this is this Five of Swords came up. I was like, I want to pull one more card for Sages, and this came up. The Five of Swords is often, I associate it with paranoia and fear and lack of trust and lack of self-trust more than anything and not being able to trust other people because of that. So this is a different way of being in the world, especially with all that Taurus energy. We're learning how to work with this energy right now. And it is about trusting into the slow sensuality. And it's also about deep spiritual surrender. It may feel quiet, but that doesn't mean that things aren't moving. It may feel quiet, but that doesn't mean things aren't getting built in beautiful, empowering ways that are designed just for you. So don't get paranoid because it's all really good. It's all really good energy that you guys are working with this month. And I'm not just saying that to make you feel better. This is profound stuff. We're getting to the kernel. We're getting to the, the, the core of where energy exchange happens. We're getting to the core of where you hit into that in order to see manifestation that connects with you. And it has been a process that we have been slowly narrowing down into this little core. It's very quiet. It's very simple. And the readiness for the Sag family to get in there and experience it, it's taken some time. But it's starting to show up in a very clear way that I can see. I can see it. Trust. I love you guys so, so very much. You know how I feel about you. You, you. you guys are still the loves of my life. And if I think about it too much, I will cry because, like I said, I'm really missing my close sages like so much my heart is just like whew, oh my gosh but go check out my magical mid-year intuitive guide i really had fun creating that i think you will benefit so much from it um you can also find me on instagram at sarah verba i think that's where i'm going to be announcing any last minute sessions i'm booked all the way through the next few months and i don't know ever like what my travel schedule is going to be like that far in advance so i'm thinking about starting to kind of announce little pockets of time where i can sit and do sessions so it might be a little bit more in the moment and so that will be a great place to check in for that stuff you can also find me on my website sarahtarot.com i'll leave all my the magical menu and where to find me online in the description box. So just click on that and you'll have all your links. There's a donation link for PayPal if you're interested in that. If you just want to add to the community here. Um, also, I'm wearing Pink Loon's gorgeous jewelry. As always, she is my go-to. So go check her out. I think she's going to be making some amazing stuff over the next few months. 15% off for my lovelies. I love you guys so much. I will see you for the next month's readings and for more moon magics. I'm so grateful for you guys. Thank you so much for being with me.